disgusting pigs. First, we had kitchen nightmares. The entirety of MasterChef uploaded onto XQC's YouTube channel, Hell's Kitchen, Gordon Ramsay, but in a hotel. And now, Gordon Ramsay is back from uploading half-melted grilled cheese on his YouTube channel with a brand new show, Next Level Chef. Take to the next level. Welcome. Oh my gosh. To Next Level Chef. What do you do for a living? Uh, I stream on Twitch, my cooking chef. What the f is Twitch? Now, I first heard of Next Level Chef from that clip right there that I just showed you, where Gordon says, What, what the, the f is, is Twitch? Twitch? Because it went semi viral on Gamer Twitter earlier this year, and I knew from there that I had to watch the show. Literally, even the official Twitch account and Gordon Ramsay both had like matching Twitter bios for a week for this like matching cute Twitter romance. Um, also, contrary to the screenshot, Gordon Ramsay does not follow me back on Twitter. This screenshot was taken from a contestant on the show, the one that streams on Twitch. So I ended up loving the show and it gets absolutely wild. So I think you'll enjoy exploring it with me. I will avoid spoilers because honestly, you don't need spoilers to enjoy what I have to say about it. This video is sponsored by my patrons. Thanks. And this cool, th look at this shirt that I found at the thrift store. It's, this is an officially licensed dare shirt. How cool is that? I got it for three bucks. So the show is about 15 chefs across America competing until there's one of them left and is crowned next level chef. Also winning $250,000 and professional mentorship from Gordon Ramsay and the two other celebrity chef judges on the show. I'll get to that in a minute. For a full year, except there's a twist. There are three levels of kitchens. There's the top state of the art kitchen, the middle kitchen, and the basement kitchen, which is basically every college dorm room's community kitchen with half-working ovens. Anyone know what this is for? That's What's... called a mashed potato. What big ass potatoes are you mashing? Hence, next level, chef. Get it? The 15 chefs are divided into three teams of five under the guidance and coaching of three celebrity chefs who are going to pretend are just as famous as Gordon Ramsay, Chef Arrington, Chef Blaze, and Gordon Ramsay. Don't get me wrong, I grew to love these other chefs, especially Chef Arrington, but come on, it, it's Gordon Ramsay. In the first episode, they get this out of the way, they have the contestants cook a trial meal, and then they do like an NFL style draft onto each team. And my poor girl Courtney gets picked last, but she probably has to be one of my favorite contestants on the show, and you'll see why. So the producers obviously picked a lot of good personalities for this show because they purposefully chose people who are social media chefs, home chefs, with like a few professional chefs into the mix. Some of the standout cast is my girl Courtney, who you just saw. She's a home chef and throws out one of the best lines in the whole show. You put enough cream and butter in anything, it's gonna taste good. Oh, okay. That's some butter for you. I literally had to rewind the show <laughs> so we could watch that again <laughs> because it was so funny. Drew and I were just laughing our asses off. No, I'm not talking about Drew Gooden. There's also A, who has some of the best energy in the show. The filet does not belong in the basement because it's so beautiful. And I feel that way about myself, but I am here. Jonathan, a wholesome sweetheart from a small town in Alabama. I firmly believe you gotta stick with the people who believed in you first. You can't just leave people for something shiny that comes along. Piet, who was a victim of the editors making her talk about how she's Native American and literally every single chance that she gets. I am Native American. But my people are, and with it's Native American, my people. Ruel, the most arrogant underdog on the show. It's all about me, which means I might have to be a little bit selfish. Mariah, the youngest looking 38 year old I've ever seen. Amber, the one who says that food should make sex sounds. When I serve a dish, I'm always going for sex sounds. That's my sort of litmus test for how good the food is their whole body slumps and their head goes back and they're just like they do that i'm like oh yeah and my girl trisha of course, who streams on Twitch. She has to be my favorite contestant on Next Level Chef. Every single episode without fail, she is having a mental breakdown or setting something on fire or both. And I love her so much for that. Am I about to have a heart attack? I don't think I can feel my nose. Is this a stroke? I'm always nervous. I always feel like I'm not enough, I'm not good enough. Sorry, Chef, I'm shaking. Breathe. I'm shaking. You have to breathe. I want you to stop shaking. Okay. It sucks. Fire in the basement! Come on, get that fire out of there. You are really determined to light these fires in this kitchen, aren't you? 
As someone who is also Asian with crippling anxiety, she really spoke to me on the show and I was rooting for her every single episode. So for the show itself, every episode there is a cooking prompt. Whether it be poultry, brunch, Italian, there's always a theme of the day. Each team picks a random key card that goes to the elevator to see which kitchen they've lucked out with for the episode. And I guess the point here is that the next level chef is able to create magic no matter what floor they're on. There's a big platform that drops and everyone has to run and grab the ingredients before the platform continues down to each floor. So not only does the bottom kitchen get half working appliances, but they also get the last and worst pick of ingredients to choose from. What is potted meat? Um, except for when Amber drops a steak through the floor. Was that a steak? And then they still allow one of the contestants to pick it up off the floor and use it in their dish. And then yada yada, they cook. And then the chefs taste all the dishes and they announce the best dish of the night. And that dish wins safety for your entire team that episode. So even if you cooked a dog shit meal, if you simultaneously had the best dish of the night on your team, your ass was safe from elimination. So now the other two team coaches have to pick the worst dish on each of their teams to go compete in a 1v1 elimination battle with their fists. And the first one who gets knocked out has to go home. I'm kidding obviously. They have to do a cook-off, and the theme is always slightly related to that day's challenge, and then one person from that has to go home. So that's how the show works. I love reality TV when there's like no conflict. Except for Kitchen Nightmares. If Gordon doesn't yell at the owner at least five separate times in the episode, I'm bored. And wake up! You wake up! Idiot! Come in here and help! Too Hot to Handle was great. It felt more of like a comedic show. It's blue balls, a real thing. And we'll find out. Then, where you have the contestants like screaming at each other, I, that gives me anxiety and I don't want to live anxiety in my TV. I just want to watch TV to feel good. I don't like horror. I don't like drama where the world is ending. I just want to watch some people cook. And that's it. I watch TV to escape. Not remember that I live in a hellhole. So reality TV like this is great when there's no conflict for me. And it was like that for Next Level Chef too, until they started editing in conflict with the contestants. Specifically on Team Ramsey, specifically between Ruel and my favorite girl, Trisha. And I say the editors edited this in because I know how editors are. I know how you are. You can't trick me. The whole setup to make it more dramatic than it actually is. You can't fool me. Except it did, it still made me mad. Because the way that they edited this show made it seem like Ruel was out to get Trisha from the very start. I'll take the lobster. Oh, 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 I don't need chicken. I wanted the lobster. I should have thrown that down. Excuse me. Ruel is in front of me. And I'm trying to grab my ingredient. I'm really hoping to get a fatty cut, like ground pork, because it's actually very commonly used in Chinese cuisine. Anybody super hate I saw ground pork. That's the first thing I grabbed. It is perfect. Plus, I didn't want Trisha to get that ground pork either. He was sabotaging Trisha at every turn that he possibly could, instead of just staying in his own lane and proving that he can win through his own skill, instead of bringing other people down. It made me so mad. My girl is already an anxious wreck. Leave her alone. Am I about to have a heart attack? So they made Ruel the villain. There, there always has to be a villain, right? Conflict gets people talking. It gets people more interested in the show. I get it. They framed him to be arrogant and selfish, and I get it. It because only one person is going to be walking away with a quarter of a million dollars and, and FaceTiming with Gordon Ramsay at 3 a.m. Late night booty call. Late night how do I make this ramen call. But still, it made me mad. You're supposed to be on a team, Ruel. Man, I see Japan. I recognize that flag. Let me grab that. I'm circling the platform. There's no Japan at all. My guy grabbed the exact thing that Trisha wanted, knowing that she wanted it. He definitely did do some of this shit on purpose, though. So yeah, that shit made my blood boil on a cooking show. But Ruel is still probably a nice guy in, in person. It was just some TV magic for ya. I'm still mad. But the rest of the show is just filled with good competition based on skill, not sabotaging your teammates. Oh, and fawning over Gordon Ramsay on his own TV show, produced by his own company. So I'm gonna have a truffle. Oh my goodness. And me. then... Look at me. That is magic. Give me okay. a kiss. <laughs> Thank that, you. That is good. <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> Yeah, truffle. I am on cloud nine. 
Even though I cooked in the basement with him the first time, I'm so nervous. I mean, when you only see him on TV, you don't realize that he's built like a god. Um, he's amazing, isn't huh? I get really nervous when he's in the kitchen because I don't want to cook. I just want to stare at him and grab his biceps, really. I mean, what Angie says here is true. You don't realize it, but Gordon Ramsay's like six foot four. <laughs> like, he's huge. I think it's time for a height reveal. I did a poll on YouTube asking people how tall they thought I was. And with the thing is with YouTube posts is that they always go to people who don't even know who I am. This poll had 1,200 votes. And most people said I was five, between five feet and five foot four. I think that's a pretty safe guess if you're looking at it from an angle that you don't even know who I am. You know, five foot four is an average height for a woman, so. But here's my reveal in terms of Gordon Ramsay stature. Drum roll, please. I'm four foot nine. Congratulations to 21% of the people who voted on this poll. You win knowledge, you win nothing. Good job, high five, high five. This high five to people who guessed between 4'7 and 4'11 only. Only you guys. If you guessed anything else, you don't participate in this high five. Ready? Yay! Congrats. And I love seeing non-professional chefs compete and like blow the judges away on this competition. Most of these cooks haven't had any professional training and I love seeing them impress celebrity chefs like this who all have beautiful hair. Literally a mention of Chef Blaze's beautiful hair was in the trailer for Next Level Chef. Like this was something that they <laughs> wanted to advertise about the show. That hair says it all, it's got great hair. <laughs> So halfway through the competition, as you probably would have guessed because only one person can win the show, teams stop mattering at all. From now on, you'll be battling it out all alone. Which made the entire team narrative of who from whose team is going to win, oh man, this is a team competition, make me look good guys, it, completely useless. It kind of makes the viewer feel like the entire first half of the season didn't matter at all. But in terms of show structure, it stays kind of the same, except for when the judges announce the best dish of the night. They don't really get anything for it. They just get a little shout out and a, and a pat on the back and they get to feel good about themselves for the night. And then the worst three will go into the elimination battle. And every single comment on the elimination challenge dishes are so funny because they're always so backhanded. It was cooked just right, but I would have loved to see a little bit more punch. I get they're trying to give like a compliment and then a criticism of how the dish could have been better because it is elimination. It's coming down to the details of the dish to see who really stays stands out and which one was the best and deserves to stay and compete. But it's so backhanded, it's so funny. Butter sauce is delicious. I definitely get a pronounced wine flavor. If anything, I would say a little salt. So in between segments of reality shows, you always get these talking heads, right? And in every Gordon Ramsay show, Gordon's talking head is the funniest thing ever. He always looks like he has to pee his pants or he's late to catch the bus. And you just caught him off guard with this interview. Even in his YouTube videos, he does this. It's so frantic and chaotic and I love it. Cook better. And that's about all I can give you without spoiling who goes home and who gets eliminated. I think it's a good watch. The whole season is now on Hulu. This is not sponsored by Next Level Chef. <clears throat> Gordon, please follow me back on Twitter. This video is actually sponsored by my patrons. This video